One question that people often ask me is how do I build an Uber clone or an e-commerce app or a food ordering app for my grandma in Flutter? And while my full-time job is to create Flutter tutorials and courses, I don't have the time to make tutorials for every app out there. Most importantly, you shouldn't need to rely on tutorials in order to build your own apps. So today I want to share my mental process for how I build complex apps, along with some tips about how to learn effectively. In fact, I'm gonna tell you all about how I built this complex habit tracking application, which is the main project of my latest Flutter course, and it includes a lot of custom UI and animations. But before we get to all of this, let me tell you how I think about coding. And the way I see this is that building apps is a bit like playing Legos. And when you play Lego, you can make complex things by putting together smaller building blocks, which are made of, well, Legos. And when it comes to app development, you make complex apps by putting together small building blocks made of code. So if you want to get good at building complex Flutter apps, you need some in-depth knowledge of the Dart language and the Flutter foundations and APIs. These are your tools for the job, and you need to learn them well. But that's not enough. You also need to know about solid programming principles, design patterns, how to debug your apps, as well as some core packages so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And of course, there is a lot more, and learning all of this takes time. But what takes even longer is trying to build a complex app before you understand the foundations well enough. And if you don't have a solid foundation, you'll struggle, get stuck, and wait hours or days for an answer on Stack Overflow. However, once you do have a solid foundation, you'll have at least some sense for how to proceed without much outside help. And all this sounds nice, but what if you're not there yet and you don't know how to build complex apps? And as it turns out, I spent the last few months building a complex app myself and creating an entire Flutter course about it. And I'm about to share how I did it. And this was a challenge for me, because this app has a lot of custom UIs and animations. And I didn't know how to implement many of these features upfront, nor did I know much about Flutter animations before I started. And even though I went through a lot of trial and error before completing this project, I did not get stuck and found a solution to every problem I faced along the way. So how did I do it? Well, the goal of this project was to create a working clone of an existing app. So I downloaded the Strix app from the App Store and spent a lot of time figuring out what were the main building blocks and how each feature could be implemented. And I even reverse engineered the entire design so that I could create a complete set of styles and themes that I could use in the code. And some of the most challenging features were an animated task completion ring controlled by a tap and hold gesture, and a 3D page flip transition that could be triggered programmatically or with gestures, and completely custom animated theming with multiple color themes and multiple variants for each theme. And when I started, I had no idea how to build any of these features, but I knew that they all involved animations. Luckily, the Flutter documentation has a very good introduction to animations, along with a lot of video tutorials and code labs that I could use to get some practice with the basics. So I read the documentation multiple times, and then I tried to create a mental map of which animation APIs could be used for which app features. And then I started building the features one at a time. And some things such as the task completion ring were not too complex because I already had some prior knowledge about how to use custom painters and explicit animations. But other things like the page flip transition were out of my league and I didn't see an obvious way to apply any of the Flutter animation APIs to get the effect that I wanted. So what did I do? Well, I went online and I quickly found a couple of tutorials that set me in the right direction. And then I experimented with the code from one of the tutorials, breaking it down and reassembling it, just like you would do with Legos. And I created my first solution from it. But the sample code wasn't good enough for my use case, and I wanted to take things further. And at this stage, what I didn't do was to go back online looking for other tutorials. Rather, I improved my solution with what I learned from the Flutter documentation, creating something entirely new that no one had done before. This was valuable, so I decided to open source it as a free package that could be used by others. And I also shared my own tutorials about how I created it. And the takeaway here is that sometimes there just isn't a ready-made tutorial or package for what you need. So you need to build things from scratch or by combining what's already there. And this is a great way to learn. And if you figure out something hard, then you can share the result for bonus points. So how did I manage to build this up without getting stuck? Well. 
even though I was creating a clone of an existing app, I have chosen an app with complex animations on purpose and I have faced many challenges along the way. But how I was able to take on a complex app in the first place is that I was comfortable with all the fundamentals. I never had to worry about what syntax to use because I know Dart very well. And my code was well organized from the start because I know how to write maintainable code. And I encountered errors along the way, but I didn't get stuck because I know how to debug and use DuckDuckGo. And the same can be true for you. And I'm not saying that you can master Flutter app development in a few months. I'm saying that learning the foundations well will save you a ton of time going forward. But let's get back to your problems. And you may still be stuck not knowing how to build that Uber clone or e-commerce app or to-do list for your grandma. And I get it, every app is different and has different requirements. And you'll always encounter things that you don't know. But rather than watching tutorial after tutorial after tutorial and trying to learn how to build app X, focus on the fundamental techniques and design patterns used to build mobile apps and learn how to debug your apps using breakpoints and the Flutter inspector and learn how to make the most of Stack Overflow and don't just copy paste the code that you find here. In fact, when I need to go online and find answers, I ask myself, is this answer a good match for my use case? Does it fit well inside my code base or do I need to tweak it and rewrite it? Will it work for all edge cases? And do I understand this code completely? And if not, I dig deeper and try to gain a deeper knowledge. And if you do this over and over, you'll get superpowers because you'll become stuck less often and manage to solve things without asking and waiting for help. You'll also build muscle memory about what works and what doesn't. And all of this is to say that you can go a long way just by reading the documentation and practicing things. So that leaves us with a question. And that is, are tutorials and courses a waste of time and money? After all, the number one advice given to people stuck in tutorial hell is to build your own apps. And that's how I have learned and how I still do things today. But you know what? I have 15 years of experience and I still buy courses when I know that they will save me time. And if a topic or language or package is well documented and easy to understand, then you don't need a tutorial or course about it. But that's not always the case. And sometimes it's more time effective to take a good, well-structured course to learn about a specific topic in depth, especially if you are new to it or you can't find what you need elsewhere. So then the question becomes, where can you find good tutorials and courses? And this is a good question, but an even better one is who makes them? And I think this is key because you want to learn from someone who's an expert in their field and is good at explaining complex concepts concisely and in simple terms. So hang out on Twitter and Reddit and figure out who's consistently posting valuable stuff. And if you want, you can even discover the best developer blogs on any tech stack. And as far as Flutter goes, this is what I strive to do create good content and help others fast track their learning. For example, it took me 60 hours to build this entire app and I condensed all my learnings into a seven hour course covering Flutter animations in detail. So if this is a topic that you need to learn about, then taking the course might save you a lot of time. In summary, I see tutorials and courses and deliberate practice as complementary tasks. And alongside reading the documentation, watching tutorials and taking courses, you need to practice building apps by yourself and learn from your mistakes. And by creating a continuous loop of learning and practicing things, you'll be able to progress a lot faster. Not how this is a loop. It's about practicing what you learn right after you learn it. And if you only watch tutorial after tutorial after tutorial, you won't retain anything meaningful because you didn't practice. Likewise, if you only ever practice on your own, then your coding style will suffer. This is where joining open source projects and working with others can have an outsized impact. And at the end of the day, a lot of this is about exposing yourself to different ways of doing things, learning trade-offs and finding what works for you and your project. And to wrap up, I'd like to say that if you are looking for good resources about Flutter app development, you should check out my Flutter email course and newsletter. I spent a lot of time putting together a curated list of resources, guiding you through the most important topics and helping you choose the right tools and packages. So my newsletter brings this all together into a single email course that you can join today for free. So that is all for today. If this video has helped you, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.